Those lovely tones mean it's Monday. It's a little after four. It's time for Monday Mirage as God gives out an occurrence in the world of sports. And then we all decide, is it real? Meaning it should have happened, did happen, could happen again, or is it a mirage? And don't get used to it. A college basketball-themed edition of Monday Mirage is here. Let's start with the first one. Real or mirage, Kansas is the best team left in the NCAA tournament. Uh, let me just let me start with a little bit of information for you. Vegas says real. Right now, they are a, uh, just under a 5-1 to one favorite to win it all. It's like 4.75. They're a 19-4, to four, which would put them just to have North Carolina, which is 5-1. to one. Uh, Arizona and Gonzaga, 13-2s. to twos. So if you were to listen to Vegas, real. The way they played... I got to tell you, I think this year's up in the air. I say Mirage. I don't think anybody's the favorite. Okay. All right. I'm going to go Mirage as well because I picked Arizona to the start of the tournament. And right now, Kansas feels like a team that could beat Arizona. But if they played in the Final Four, the game would be in Arizona. So I would lean towards Arizona again. I've watched Arizona play. I believe at the start of the tournament, they could win it all. Nothing's changed for that team to make me think different. Kansas, Mirage, Arizona for me is the best team left in the field. Real well, or Michigan? Mo- oh, we'll get to Michigan in a All second. Right, okay. Don't you worry about don't your you Wolverines. Leave, don't you leave my Wolverines out of this. Real, you know, we'll go. I'm going to skip ahead right yeah, now. Yeah, let's go. Real or Mirage? Michigan is the most dangerous team left in the field. I don't think anybody wants to play them. I'm going to say real, man. I, I tell you, there's things, there's things you see. And, 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 you know, not necessarily X's and O's and, and things of that nature, but there's champions have a way of taking life events and using them to their benefit and to do th- little things just to, to take the pressure off. So they've got both of those in my eyes. When you look at the plane accident, it couldn't lift off because of the wind. They were very close to being in, in some serious trouble. Uh, they've used that to bond even tighter than they already were. Then the water thing. Have you seen this? So Beeline yeah, gets done. Cool. Yeah, every game after every game they douse Beeline with water. So what's he do? He sneaks a super soaker into his office and starts like just just dredging the kids. <laughs> I think I think that's the team. When I look up and down, maybe Wisconsin too, because there's something about or the or the big dude at Purdue. But I think I think Michigan right in the middle there, seven seed. I think I don't think anybody is looking at them and going, I want them. I think Oregon just dutied themselves. Yeah, Michigan, and are they the most dangerous team left in the field, though? I'm going to go Mirage, and here's why. I wanted to compare them to that UConn team with Kemba Walker because they feel so similar. Eighth, ninth seed in their conference tournament, make a run all the way through, win the conference tournament, and look great in the NCAA tournament. But is DJ Wilson a good enough player where he can be the one to roll the ball out to him and make plays when it matters the most, like a Kemba Walker? Is the big key Bassa? Is oh, he good Mo enough? Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner. Is he good enough to take over a game? He looked like Those he could against Those so athletic, man. But I was shocked. Consistently, Mo Wagner, that was the best game of his life he played. Can he right. do it for four more games? I would lean towards South Carolina because of Frank Martin's experience in the NCAA tournament before. And Cinderius Thornwell looks to be the best player of all those people. This is Beeline's third Sweet 16 with Michigan. He's 2-0 and right now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, some people were brave enough to pick him winning brackets. That was you. All the way to the final four. Real or Mirage, 11th seeded Xavier should be considered the Cinderella of the NCAA tournament. Uh, real. Uh, cause look at, that's another one. Vegas says longest shots on the board, 75 to 1 to win it all. Uh, and their team, look, say what you will. Not sure they, not sure they should be there, but they've got all the, they've got all the factors, the fun. Bill Murray's in the crowd all the time. All the weird little things. They, they play tight. They play together. That, I like them, man. I, for, I, I'm not gonna pick them to win it all, but 75 to 1. Five bucks now. I feel like I'm kissing up to Will Gunter, who was on with us earlier from South Carolina, but I'm going back to South Carolina here again. It's a mirage. Here's who Xavier's beaten. Second longest on the board is South Carolina, 15-1, by the way. Okay, okay. Because Xavier beat Creighton, or excuse me, Xavier beat Maryland in that yes. game. They beat Maryland. They were the underdog, but some had thought, you know, it was a two, two-point game in Maryland starting three freshmen. Was it that huge of an upset that Xavier beat that team? Not really. Then they go off and play Florida State. Florida State, you thought they were going to lose the Florida Gulf Coast. Almost did, too. They almost, almost did. did. 
and they play Xavier, and Xavier whoops them. So Xavier feeling like a Cinderella, it doesn't come off like that. When you are a team that's never been to the Sweet 16, when you're a team that just beat Duke, that feels like a Cinderella. No one gave you a chance. South Carolina, even though they're a seven seed, feels like the Cinderella to me. So Mirage there for me. I'm with you. Real and Mirage with Grayson Allen now out of the tournament. Purdue's Caleb Biggie Swanigan is your favorite player left in the tournament. <sighs> Mirage. Um, I do like him. He was fun to watch. But I think I'm between the big pierogi and the big kibasa. <laughs> I, and, and granted, we're the only ones who are calling Mo Wagner in Michigan the big kibasa. We had that conversation in Designated as such. But, and Karnowski's the big pierogi Karnowski's from Gonzaga. awesome. Like, he he's... And now who's the kid that's coming up behind him? Is it is it uh, Collins? Yes. Yeah. He's See, here's Collins, who every minute he's on the floor is one Karnowski isn't, and he's up cheering him on. What, like, I, I, I guess it's, it's the pierogi. The pierogi's my guy. He is so big. Karnowski's another guy. He plays at 285? Yes. Remember Perry Ellis last year from Kansas, who everyone joked around and mm-hmm. said, how long has he been at Kansas? Then Greg Oden at Ohio State. <laughs> Greg, Oden, Greg Oden was born, looked like he was 50 years old. <laughs> You forget Karnowski's supposed to be in college. He is a grown man, and the way he plays, he's just this big old seven-footer who gets the ball and just kind of, like, drops it in. Great passer, though. Yeah, he's real smooth around the basket. A little bit of Arvidas Sabonis, whose son played for Gonzaga last year. If Sabonis and Karnowski were healthy, that Gonzaga team would have been so good. I'm with you, though, too. It is the big pierogi. Caleb Swanigan's a beast. He probably is trying to I'd bring... I'd like to see those two play against each other. Ooh, yeah. Final Four National Championship. Swanigan's like the style of player you and I like. Back to the basket, feed him the ball, let him be a beast. Right. A la Patrick Ewing, but not to that level. Biggie Swanigan's fun to watch, though. He may win, end up winning the National and, Player of the Year. And DJ Wilson looks like Slideshow Bob, so... <laughs> That's pretty cool too. People need to start picking up on our nicknames, man. It makes life so much easier to right. remember players. I don't. I don't know the real names. Just like interns. <laughs> Stupid one. Weird one. That guy who farted once. Right. <laughs> <laughs> real <laughs> poor kid's life was ruined. Break, breaks you in once. A Aaron. Yeah. Aaron. <laughs> well, yeah. That. I mean that. But see, like him. You guys got mad at me for that. And his family loved it. Aaron. Where are you? <laughs> Real and Mirage, whenever Jim Beheim retires, Syracuse basketball, that coaching position is a top 10 opening in college basketball. <sighs> You're going to hate me. I'm going to go real-ish. Uh, you went real-ish? Well, because I think so. But, all right, so when I grew up, Cuse had a, gr- a very good football program. What was it? Pa- uh, Paul Pascaloni. Pascaloni. Yeah. Uh, and I would have told you that Cuse was always going to be a dominant football program. He He's out, and I don't feel like you know they've ever been the same. Marone had a decent run for a little bit, but they've never been the same. So with hoops, I kind of like the fact that Hopkins is gone because I feel like they are going to bring in a young – there's a chance for a young awesome to come in and keep it rolling, but I don't know that it has the same luster as a Louisville or, or a Kentucky or anything like that. Yeah, and I'm kind of glad you brought up college football, and I also, as much as this hurts me – I'm going Mirage. I really don't oh, feel like it's a top 10 opening. That stinks. That hurts, huh? Because college football, you get it. Nick Saban brought back Alabama. Yeah. But it, oh, Alabama's a power. Ohio State, Michigan. Me, we can me. run through the college football. Notre Dame. The college football national powers. College basketball isn't always like that anymore. Like Gonzaga became a national power. Wichita State is competitive every single year. You have these schools that if you're a mid-major coach, like Shaka Smart at VCU, I get he left for Texas, but he could have continued to win at VCU. You don't have to leave to make a team go to the NCAA tournament every year. What draws someone to Syracuse? Is it, I get to follow a legend whose name's on the court? I get to play in front of 30,000 people? I get to go in a conference that we as a program... I get Syracuse Syracuse winners. I, I guess... I mean, right, a lot. you don't want There's that. A lot. But you don't want the Syracuse winners. You right. don't want to follow a legend. Right. You don't want to have the pressure of playing in front of 30,000. And the ACC, but Syracuse hasn't been good in the ACC let me, yet. let me break your heart for one second. Okay. If I was going to follow a legend, don't, don't I want to be the one who's only got one national championship? That hurts a little. No, but I'm saying, like, if I'm if I'm the next big and, and I'm looking at all these legends. Well, 
Beheim's universally loved in Cuse. I recruit well, sneak in, win a championship or two. I could, I could actually overshadow him. I don't think that ever happens, but I see what you're getting with that. That it's not Coach K. It's not Tom Izzo. There is a like a little Roy line Williams, here that like if I bring Patino. them one national champ. Okay, I see where you're going with that. I still wouldn't want to touch. I'm saying if I'm going to go after if I'm going to go after a legend, let it be the one who's only got one national championship, and people think it's half Mellow's championship. You know? Okay. All right. Real and Mirage. Last one here. Do you feel more confident that your daughter will defeat me in the bracket challenge? Man, real. Um, real. Because my bracket was. But she's got. Right now, you get all right. So, so just so everybody knows how we did this, we did um, standard scoring. So, thirty-two points available per round. So, the, if you get all of them right in the first round, it's thirty-two points, point per matchup. Two in the second, four, blah blah blah. Thirty-two for the championship. She has Kansas winning it all, and because of the twenty-six points that you gave her, she's currently beating you by sixteen points. <laughs> it's sixty-six to fifty. So, she doesn't have a lot of Final Four. But if Kansas wins it all, I'm pretty sure she beats you. It's going to come down to Kansas for her and UCLA and Arizona for me. Because I still have those two left. I have that as my national championship game. I lost Duke and I lost Louisville. And my bracket has been so good. I went 30 for 32 in the first round. I was yeah, on the was top of the leaderboard. I had about, if my math's good, like 10, I think, sweet 16 teams. Maybe 9. i got to go back and look. But... A good enough to still stay in the top five in most pools or challenges or whatever you want to call it. She has one horse left, and it's a good one. I need them to lose. I feel I'm gonna say I'm gonna say real for myself that I now feel more confident that she's gonna win. I know she's lost a lot of teams, but man, it's gonna drive me insane watching Arizona and UCLA if I have to show up here in a costume of her choosing for an entire show. Do you see you came charging back? In the uh, 1045theteam.com bracket. Is it Jeff LeVac? It is Jeff LeVac. Uh, three points out of the lead now. Three points out of the lead. You are, you are tied for the lead. You have 40 total points right now. The max you can get is 50. I have 37 total points. The max I can get is 48. You hear that behind you? It's footsteps. Funny. <laughs> Down footsteps. the stretch they come. Here I the come. Michigan Wolverines, Levax taking them to the promised land. Gosnings is Wildcats uh, from Arizona. No, in, the, in this league, uh, in this one, I did not. I took Kentucky. Oh, okay. So if Kentucky wins it, I could take this one down. So Michigan's in other ones. Other ones of other values and other things. But coming for you, guys. And worse than that, so is Bells. She's going to take you out with Kansas. See, I'm gonna have her. I'm gonna have her call you right after the game's over and just yell "Rock Chalk Jayhawk" <laughs> in the phone. And then would Cheetah yell that randomly into the phone too? All weekend because of you. All weekend because <laughs> she came in. She says, "Yeah, I'm gonna take Wichita State." I like saying Wichita. And you said something about saying Wichita. And ever since then, now she runs around saying Wichita. Just I think because she knows it bothers me. <laughs> I was like, "No, honey, you weren't that girl. Don't do that." By the way, another bracket. Every uh, perfect Midwest for me. I'm just saying, my Midwest was perfect. If it continues on. I could be right there, buddy. Look out. Here I come. Right behind you. Hear that? Footsteps? Hear something. <laughs> hey!